Good morning. I'm here on time today. <laughs> Let us pray. Father, I thank you for all your many blessings. I thank you for just still being here, still being alive. Heavenly Father, I ask you to go with me today with this inspiration. I ask you to let it glorify you. Let it remind us of your mercy, of your love, of your grace. Heavenly Father, I ask you to take me out of it. Let it be all about you. I ask you to sing Son Jesus' name. Amen. As Christians, as Christians, we know God hates sin. He abhors sin, the Bible says he hates it. As Christians, we know how God has dealt with sin over time. When we threw the angels, the wicked angels out of heaven because of sin. We know that he destroyed the world during Noah's time because of sin. Everybody perished in the flood except Noah and his family. We know he turned Sodom and Gomorrah into ashes because of sin. Except for Lot. Even Lot's wife perished. We know how about him sin, he hates sin. And we know as Christians, we sin. Yes, we do. But because of what Christ did on the cross, we are not enslaved by sin. We're not bound to sin. So we as Christians, if we sin over and over the same sin, willfully sin, that's crazy. And so today I want to talk about the insanity of sin. The insanity of sin. And from my supported scripture, I'm going to read from Daniel's and Luke. Daniel's 4, verse 33 and 34. And it reads this way. <coughs> verse 33. The same hour was the thing fulfilled upon Nebuchadnezzar. And he was driven from men and did eat grass as oxen. And his body was whipped with the dew of heaven, till his hairs were grown like eagles' feathers, and his nails like very claws. Verse 34. And at the end of the days, I, Nebuchadnezzar, lift up my eyes into heaven, and my understanding returned unto me. And I blessed the Most High, and I praised and honored him that liveth forever whose dominion is an everlasting dominion, and his kingdom is from generations to generations. Yes, Lord. And I also want to read from Luke uh, 15, verses 13 and 17. It reads like this. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country. And there wasted his substance with righteous living. Verse 17. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father have bread enough and to spare, and I perish from hunger? The insanity of sin. And so the two the characters in the Bible that I want to use for the insanity of sin as examples is Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon, and Babylon was an impressive empire. He was strong, he was mighty, the king was, and um, he had a dream. But before I get to the dream, it was saying that Babylon was so impressive that it had this wall that went around, the wall around the city. And it said this wall was so thick um, that four horses, Side by side, that's that drawing draw the carriages during that time. Four horses could turn around on that wall that was around that city. That's just how impressive that empire was, it's like a highway. But Ebenezer though had a dream, and his dream was that 
this tall, majestic tree. He said he dreamed a tree that almost reached to heaven. And, and the tree was loaded with fruit. And, and, and the leaves and the branches were fair to look at. And, and the tree uh, shedded all the animals that was on the ground. He could come under this tree for shed. And the birds lived in his branches. This tree was mighty. It was majestic. And it fed everybody. But Nebuchadnezzar never said in his dream, uh, he dreamed that the watcher and the Holy One came down, God and the angel, and the Holy One said, cut it down, do down the tree, just cut the tree on down. But leave it. Don't uproot it. Uh, first of all, scale everything out of the tree, the birds, uh, get rid of the animals from under the tree, uh, uh, shake off the fruit and let it scale everywhere and then give it on down. But don't uproot it, because he wanted to restore it. But he wanted to put some bands around it, copper and iron. Then he wanted the tree to just to sit in the grass and let the dew fall on it for seven years. And then also in that dream, Nebuchadnezzar uh, dreamed that uh, he said he was made to go eat with the oxen, not him, not Nebuchadnezzar. Now that was a dream, he said uh, uh, that this, this person was going to be made to eat with the oxen, was going to have a heart like an animal, a mind like an animal, and be put away from men. And so he didn't know what to make of this dream. And he, called, he got all the people from his kingdom that usually interpret dreams. But they, couldn't, they didn't understand it. I, I like to think they didn't want to understand it. Because it was a king, it was negative. And so he called Daniel. You know Daniel could interpret a dream. And so Daniel came and he told him the same dream. And the Bible said Daniel didn't say nothing for a whole hour. Then finally he told him, he said, as you, O king. You're the tree. Uh, you're going to be driven away from the men. You're going to be driven out of your empire, out of your palace. You're going to be made to live uh, with the animal. You're going to have the heart of an animal, the mind of an animal. You're going to live with them for seven years. It's you, O king. <laughs> and, and, and I imagine Nebuchadnezzar would think, believe that. He said, but then he told him again and gave him some wisdom. He said, but if you repent, he right, no. said, if you repent, from your sin and from your iniquities, your corrupted ways, if you will treat the poor a little better, maybe you'll be spared. Nebuchadnezzar didn't, didn't do that. Nebuchadnezzar had 12 months. He had a whole year to repent, but he never did. And so the last of those 12 months, the last, he was walking around in his palace so puffed up, so puffed up, Look, and, and Nebuchadnezzar was saying, oh, look at this, I mean, all this palace, uh, this kingdom that I'm over, uh, this empire, you know, I must be important. Look what all I have accomplished. And as soon as he said that, as soon as Nebuchadnezzar said that, God told him, out of your mouth, you know, you're going right out of here. He put him right out of, the, out of the kingdom, out of the palace, and he was made to live with the animals. He had a heart like the animals. He had a mind like the animals. His mind snapped. They say sometimes you're going to have a sickness like that where you think you're an animal and you behave like it. But he was driven away from that empire and he lived with the, as ate as oxen. And the Bible said that when the dew hit him, because God talked about the dew on the tree, said when the dew hit him, his hair, a lot of men are hair, say his hair turned to feathers, like an eagle. Now, his fingernails grew, grew like claws, like a bird. And then he was eating grass like the oxen. Nebuchadnezzar lived like that for seven years. But when those seven years was up, I guarantee you, he was ready to give God the praise. He was, he was ready to give God the glory. And he was ready to, to say that God is over everything. That God is the one that's over the kingdom of heaven and earth. He was ready to give him the credit. And the next person I want to talk about is the, the prodigal son. It's a familiar story. Um, we all know that story. Before I go to the prodigal son, let me get back to Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar's sin was pride. Pride. He thought too much of himself. Right. He did not want to give God the glory. Yes. 
And before I get to the product of sun, just remind of us, a lot of us are like that. Yes. We don't want to give God the glory. Yes. We don't want to give God the respect. Yes. I saw this a lot when I lived on, on campus uh, doing Tuskegee time. You would hear the, some of the guys saying, nobody helped me. I, I, I worked my way through school. I, you know, I had to work and I had to get grants. Nobody gave me anything. I heard them say, I, you know, I went on and got my BS. I went on and got my MS. I went on and got my PhD. Nobody helped me. I did this, and I went on and got a job, and I did this, and I did that. But they re didn't realize that God gave them the strength to work their way through school. Gave them the strength, uh, the, the ability to work and get the grades, to get the degrees. I just see it all the time. And you hear people say sometimes, Nobody help me. I pull myself on a self-made man. I pull myself up by my bootstrap. But they don't realize God gave the boots and gave the straw. All right. All right. Now to get back to the prodigal son. The prodigal son told his father he wanted what he had to give to him right away. He did not want to wait for it. He wanted his substance right then. His money. His whatever. The prodigal son start to fall right then. As soon as he wanted what the father had for him, but didn't want to take the father with him, wanted to go off on his own. And we're like that today. A lot of us, we want what the father got for us, but we don't want him to go with us all the time. Now see, we want him when he's sick. We call him, Lord, please help me. Please help the doctor. I know I do help me. Let the doctor know what he's doing. Help me. But we always want him to go with us when he's going over there when we ain't got no business. Uh, we want him when we have children doing stuff and they ain't got no business. Lord, help my child. Help me get back on the street. But we don't want him when we're talking about stuff we ain't got no business talking about. See, we like the prodigal son sometimes. We want what he got, but we don't always want to take him with us. So the prodigal son went on, and, uh, and the Bible said he, had a, he did a righteous living. That means he was pleasure seeking. And I can imagine him doing everything he wanted to do uh, with, the, with all the money and the substance that he had. But the Bible went on to say they had a family came into the land. All of a sudden, the prodigal son was in want. And he done run out of everything now. Uh, he's penniless. He's homeless. He's friendless. He don't have anything. He's in want. Uh, and, and the Satan's world will take from you. You know, God will give us. But Satan world will take from you. Satan world not giving you nothing. It was use you and misuse you. It will take from you. So now he's in want. He has nothing else. And so he got hired to feed the swine. You all know this story. He got hired to feed the hogs. And when he was feeding the hogs, <laughs> He was eating what the hogs were eating because he was so hungry. He was hungry now. He had nothing. Nobody's giving him nothing. And we see that a lot. We see people get on that hard luck and then we see them eating out of garbage cans and that, that people have left all food and stuff. The boy had gotten like that. He was in want. But he came to himself. Then sanity of sin. His sanity came back. He said, now, you know, my father's servants got more to eat than this. And here I am eating like this. But he got up and decided to go back home. You can always get up out the whole pen and go back home. And so, see, he got up and he went on back home. And the Bible says his father was waiting for him, hugged him. And see, that's what God does to us. When we stray away, when we go back, he waiting for us. With his arm up, the man was waiting for his son. He hugged him. And he kissed him. He gave him a robe to put on. He gave him shoes to put on so people won't think he don't serve. He served in wet shoes. The slaves in wet shoes. But that was his son. He wanted him to people to know this is my son. Know who he belonged to. He gave him a ring. They didn't know who he belonged. That's what God does to us. He wants people to know that we belong to him. We are sealed. The ring was a seal. We sealed with the Holy Spirit. People ought to know that we belong to God. He went on back home and he told his father, he said, forgive me, I have sinned against you and God. And that's all God wants us to do. When we sin, he wants us to uh, admit it. 
and say that we are sorry. And then he, and just like Chronicles said, Second Chronicles said, when God said, if my people are <laughs> called by my name, if my people will humble themselves, pray, seek me, and turn, turn from their sin. He said, turn now, 180 degrees. Don't turn all the way back. They turn back and back right back into the sin. But turn from your sin. And then they'll hear from me. And I'll forgive them. And so we don't have to look at the Old Testament at crazy. We don't have to look at the New Testament to see insanity. All we got to do is look at the world today. You can turn on your TV on a news channel, a not the news channel, and see crazy. Uh, you can click on your internet and see crazy. You can put, look at your cell phone and see crazy. You, know, you can open up the newspaper paper and see insanity. This world, I mean, so many people that don't believe in God, don't want to know God, don't believe in Jesus, don't know what Jesus, so they're doing some of everything in this world. Uh, you got people that's raping people. Uh, you got men that's raping little kids. Uh, you know, I saw on the news where one man raped a couple. I mean, they don't want that's crazy. Uh, you got people that, you got 15 year olds and teenagers carjacking. You got men marrying men. You got women marrying, marrying women. You got men don't want to be men, want to be women. You got women don't want to be a woman, want to be a man. That's crazy. You got children growing up with two mommies. You got children growing up with two husbands. Uh, and, and it's just crazy, confusing the children. If you want to see insanity, just look at the world. But us as Christians, now we know it's sin. But like I said, because of what Christ did on the cross, we don't have to be a slave to sin. Because once you accept Christ, we have the Holy Spirit leading and guiding and directing us. And if you let it, if you yield to it, it'll direct you. If you find yourself straight, I'll tell you, don't do that. If you find yourself doing something you're getting God of business, don't do that. If you find yourself saying something, don't say that. If it, if it tell you, go back and straighten that out. Uh, if you listen to the Holy Spirit, I know it talks to me, because sometimes I don't always want to do everything it says do. Uh, you ought to go over there and say, thank you, Carol. And I'm like, why? Oh, you don't say thank you to me, but you eventually go on and do it. If you allow it, it will guide and lead you. So as Christians, as I go into my seat, we know we don't have to be a slave to sin because we hold the Catholic Holy Spirit. Thank you.